Shaytan, the wretched and cursed Shaytan, devil, who is the special enemy of the human being. And he is not even a hidden opposition. He is apparent, he is there. And we can see the situation as such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, the aduwum mubeen, this is the definition of of shaitan that totally clear apparent he is your enemy the shaitan and he is in front of you he is there alongside you totally now what does an enemy do an enemy even if you take the smallest scale of enemy then the enemy of a person and the person who has the enmity the enemy will try his best to inflict loss on the person that he hates. Any enemy. And the enemy who has sought permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah give me permission and time, I want to be the enemy of mankind, of human beings. Then imagine the scale of his enmity, the scale of his attempts and enmity, and try he's trying to give loss to human beings. Even the person who has a little bit of intellect, and we will say the person with understanding wisdom is he or she who always remains alert and aware of his or her enemies. Clear and aware and attentive that my enemy may attack me at any time. And the people of understanding definitely do this with regards to the enemy. That my enemy may try to do something bad to me or say something bad to me or give me loss at any time or harm at any time. And if you know the enemy... Who then means then even more so. So for this reason, if we know that shaitan, the devil is our enemy and the devil can give us a loss. And what is the sign of the loss that shaitan inflicts? And what is the methodology of the shaitan? How does he inflict harm on mankind? The sign or the basis upon which we can see that shaitan is trying to give us loss is that he doesn't give us loss in the world. He has no link with the world. He doesn't care you can make 10,000 buildings, become a successful businessman and be very happy and prosperous in the world. Shaitan has no link with this. No link whatsoever. He doesn't care. He doesn't waste his time on material things. He doesn't try to reduce your turnover or if you're making a building or a, a block of flats or something that he'll spoil that or he doesn't want you to be rich or if your business was running nicely, he'll come and spoil it. No, 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 no. Shaitan is not worried about these things. He says, it's fine. You carry on enjoying yourself in the world shaitan's link with regards to spoiling our affairs is genuinely to do with our akhir our hereafter shaitan knows that the dunya this person is going to depart after some time when death comes they will go let him make what he's going to make what she's going to make but the real life the akhir the akhir the hereafter from the beginning of the akhir from death onwards Onwards, shaitan wants to destroy our every phase and footstep and moment. And he's happy so much shaitan that when an individual human being does an action which spoils his or hereafter, that's Eid for the shaitan. Ah, this is it, my success. Do what you want in the world. Business, prosperous, transactions, traveling, wandering. No problem, shaitan says. But his enmity is that from the depth of his heart, shaitan wants that our hisab kitab accounts of the hereafter are destroyed. And this is an extreme enmity we should be aware. It doesn't make sense that we are negligent of shaitan. And so much of the dunya today is not aware of shaitan, doesn't even know. Today, forget about enemy, we say he's our friend. He's our true friend. We don't sleep unless we don't make friendship with shaitan. We don't sleep unless we don't allow his messages to come into our ears and our brains. And unless we see with our eyes his messages, we don't go to sleep. Because he gives us advice, guidance. He gives us how to uh, attract God to follow. How many people are following shaitan's friendship? Maybe more than 90% who are on his track. 
So the thing that shaitan wants to do here, whether it's me or you, a wali of Allah, ghaus, kutub, any human being, every human, apart from the, the prophets salam, who were innocent and shaitan could not influence them, the rest of mankind, doesn't matter what level he's on, what piety he has, what spirituality level he's on, whatever, you know, wali, etc. Let's take the sahaba kram, radiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with them, that can the, the awliya Allah after them reach to their status? No, but even they were influenced by shaitan and this is how big an enemy he is he will carry on fulfilling his duty second by second what are his methods he has many methods numerous methods has the shaitan every day he comes out with new tactics and methods on these new tactics we see in methods in front of us these are all the works of shaitan he says factory he manufactures the methods the angles from which he attacks people and how people come off track look how people yeah how to make um, arguments coming to masjids how how to reduce ilam, how to create arguments in the homes, how to make the children disobedient, how to take the women out of the house into the bazaar, into the marketplace. Everything is shaitan doing this or not? What do we say? Oh, this country is doing this, that country said this, they are spoiling us. What are those poor souls going to do to us? They're not. Where's the control come from? Because they've got permission, the great permission from shaitan to this extent. That people say, oh, we're forced to do this. Oh, we're forced, we can't help it. Many big people with big status in deen. No, 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 it's difficult. Well, let's make this permissible now. It's jais now. It's jais. Oh, let's go and ask them for the fatwa. What can we do? We're living in society. Okay, we might as well make this unlawful action jais permissible. This is the situation today in our society. So shaitan has a very big method of attack. Very big method of how to inflict harm. May Allah Ta'ala save us from shaitan. Because he is the biggest danger today. The biggest danger. He is such a serious and forceful uh, attack that he doesn't just make us disobedient. Rather, what shaitan does is that he doesn't just make us far from Allah. Rather, he makes us so far from Allah, so far from Allah when he attacks human being that the human being becomes a mushrik. He says that he has iman. Yes, just like in the Quran says in the first page, we say we are Muslim, but these are not believers this is what Allah Ta'ala says, isn't it, in the Quran? We say that we are believers, we have iman, but we are not believers, Allah Ta'ala says. They are not believers. They say they are believers, but they are not. So, shaitan's attack comes so strong, brothers, that he makes a person into a mushrik, into a polytheist, person who uh, ascribes partners to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't even know in his life that he's ascribing partners to Allah. And he dies, his salatul janazah being prayed, his funeral, and he's being closed into his coffin and lowered into the grave. And then the real world opens up. The reality opens up. And then we will realize, or that person realize that you were a mushrik. You did shirk in the world. You worship somebody else other than Allah. That's why you were a mushrik. But Allah Ta'ala has given us the kalam. His Qur'ani hakim. His great kitab. And this is the amali ruh. The spirit of all practice and guidance. And the framework of life for us. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks to the human being in the Qur'an. We don't do this. We don't this. Allah Ta'ala says, open the Qur'an and me and you will start to speak. Wallahi, I swear by Allah that the discussion of mankind will start when he reads the Qur'an. He will be speaking to all the problems. If we have so many problems, numerous, and we put them in front of us and open the Qur'an and see guidance from Allah. Even the people who don't believe, Allah Ta'ala gives them iman. Allah says, we say, Allah give us hidayah. And, and the person who wants guidance says, Allah give me the guidance. He knows that Allah Ta'ala has one markaz, headquarters from which the guidance comes. Why? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that time when He initiated, Iqra bismi rabbi kalladhi khalaq, Allah ta'ala invited His Habib, His beloved, kept Him in the cave, taught Him meditation, allowed Him to do a meditation, maraqabad, dhikr in the heart. This is where it started, isn't it? What was the first form of worship? Was maraqaba, dhikr in the heart, silent dhikr, meditation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would go to the Jabal al Nur, to the Mount of Nur, to the cave of Hira. And Rasulullah Azam would spend days there meditating dhikr and the heart. What was this? How did he do it? This is another subject, another complete subject. And the points have opened up to the walis of Allah. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi would do maraqaba, meditate in the heart towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when Allah Ta'ala took him through the levels of maraqaba to the destination, to the level, the first thing that Rasulullah Sallallahu prepared Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and what did he do? That he descended from Hira and he came to his qawm and he came with the methodology, the pure, chemistry path of deen of Islam 
Subhanallah. So he attained prophethood, and aside, alongside that, Allah gave him the kitab, the Quran. Go, this kitab is guidance for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Quran, and you are the guide until the day of judgment for every single human being, and you will propagate the whole deen and all of the previous prophets that passed away, all of their languages, their speech, and the kitabs and the kalams. You will summarize all of that and complete the deen with the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala said. So this is the kalam of the Quran. We are so, so far from the Quran today. So far. But there's not one issue, not one, um, you can say, problem from today or from the previous generations or the pre- future generations that will come. The people who will be born and new issues will arise in society. Just like 100 years ago. There were different style, lifestyle, methods and different sort of framework people followed. But who was the guide? Who was the guide? Allah's Habib sallallahu was the guide and the Quran was the, the book that would guide us hundred years ago now and will do the same in the future. So Allah Ta'ala has told us in this Quran, it's not that anything is hidden. Everything is there presented. So what is it that Allah Ta'ala has told us? Allah Ta'ala says that, look, I remind you, remind you, you're disobedient. He goes far and he becomes a mushrik and he leaves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't even know that he is far from the deen. And he in front of him thinks in his life, that, yeah, I'm praying salah, I go on hajj. I'm, I'm praying, I'm worshipping, I'm a mu'min, I'm a believer. But, but that even for example, the person's doing tawaf while he's a mushrik or she's a mushrik. And the person's prostrating, but he's not prostrating to Allah in the masjid. And those recitations of the Quran are not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dhikr is not being done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk, it's shirk at that time. Ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is it that person does? What method does he utilize to become the, accompan- the, the companion of shaitan? Shaitan makes the person a coward. Buzdil. Buzdil. So a person who has iman. Iman is strong, robust. There's nothing stronger than iman belief in this whole universe. Because iman is so powerful. A mu'min has so much strength and power that if in the hand of a mu'min even for example a a mu'min has like a weapon like the sword and he hits it on the ground and it can cut through you can say the layers of the earth seven layers of the earth look Hazar Ali radiyallahu anhu he was so strong that when he would strike a blow it would break and crumble the rocks to dust this was the power because he had iman strong iman a lot of iman for which reason for which reason how does a mu'min have the strength how does the, the strength come into a mu'min? How? What is it? That he eats nothing. The sahaba had nothing to eat. They had um, no juice that they drank, nothing. All they had was, they had dates, a few dates and a sips of water. Zamzam, and then somebody would come. Anybody could test his power and shake his hand or put your eyes into his eyes. They wouldn't see that. How many people are there in front of them? How much is the opposition? No, 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 no. Just, okay, fine. That's fine. If you are opposition, then let's uh, see what you have to offer. And me and you, what are we? Don't take what I'm saying bad because the operation is about to start. So we have to discuss in detail. I'm not speaking to the rocks or the stones. You are my friends and I'm sitting down here. And we're speaking and discussing with each other. This is what we've come to discuss, isn't it? Isn't this what you like? That we speak openly and clearly. You like this and these are the words that we'll discuss. Because the fakir has only this crying and... Fikr and worry And this is what we should come for If you come for this that's good If you don't then that's your choice We will speak in detail and unlock the truth Because we are sat like the mice You know Like the mice in the house Totally useless and weak and what is our job? We had iman we, we have forgotten our iman Let's look at our iman today That we eat so much more than the sabah We drink milk More than them And pure milk with the cream And the layers of cream on top of the milk And custard And the, de- the desserts on this less custard And organic foods have come out Allah Ta'ala has given us today organic foods We have organic tins And organic trees And organic plants Organic olives Organic foods Organic vegetables This is an organic cow He drinks pure And 70,000 types of milk nowadays on the shelf And which, which milk shall I pick up from the shelf? So much food And what did the Sahaba Ikram have? They had no resources for weeks. They were nothing to eat. They wouldn't even have water to drink for days upon days. And the strength they had though. Because what gave them strength? The depth of what? Their iman gave them strength. Their belief gave them strength. And me and you, do we have iman? Don't we have iman? Let's think now. So what does shaitan do? We'll speak loudly. Yes, what? Think, think. We don't know, you can think. I'm not saying anything. Where are we sat? In the house of Allah, in the masjid. We recited. I'm not taking the... People say, oh, he takes the Quran out of his... Like people take out of the pocket. Yes, yeah, And then they have the, 
you know, the, and they, they, they're wiping the screen and reading the Quran. What does shaitan do? Yeah, so we'll take it out of our pocket, press the buttons, oh, I'm reading Quran. And then when we leave the masjid, and then we'll press a few other buttons, oh, this looks nice. Oh, this looks nice. What a severe and impure message. So we're saying, I'm praying, I'm reciting Surah Chizdar, Astaghfirullah, then you're wiping the screen, and then we're prostrating to something else. We see immoral and impure scenes and pictures from the same resource. Allah says, La taqrabu fahisha. That the Quran, don't even read in this device uh, and if I don't say this is not a fatwa the Mulana might say oh what's he saying here? but I'm saying La taqrabu fahisha. that don't, reading the Quran in this device also is a method of shaitan this is shaitan who uses his methods oh it's good it's a nice laptop I've bought a tablet for the children and in this you can see Medina and Mecca and then you keep on saying Medina Mecca until night you don't know what the children have seen and watched the tariqah, the method you don't know, they know how to give love and exchange love. Today in society, a six-year-old child asks the child, what is the meaning of sex? And the child will explain to you. And, and, and physically will try to demonstrate to you what this is. And we say, huh, what's this? So what are we? And we call ourselves Muslim. And where has shaitan taken us today? What does shaitan do? He plays games with the human being. He has methods, techniques. What does he do? What does he make us? What we are. What's there to hide? We are cowards. Cowards, he makes us cowards. That's the game of shaitan. That's his method. The, meth- the meaning of being a coward isn't this, that a person, or for example, oh, he's brave and he's blowing up buildings and killing people and striking at their necks. Oh look what the people, and today people physically use violence in the name of Islam. They're blowing up mosques and synagogues and churches and airplanes and buildings and killing people. And shaitan tells these violent people, that, oh you're strong Muslims, you're brave, you're the best. Is this, is this courage? Killing people, is this courage? Look at the style of shaitan and how he's spoiled the brains of people. How does he make the people cowards, shaitan? Is this bravery? Is this courage to killing human beings? Is this bravery? And to build, blow up buildings and planes, this is bravery? Is this courage? But shaitan teaches us and poisons us with injection. Oh, these are the most brave people. They're killing people and we have spread the flag of Islam and we're spreading Islam in the world today. We're killing people. Astaghfirullah. Is this not the case? Look, I speak openly and honestly. That what a big deception shaitan has attacked us with. And who's doing this? Shaitan and his workers and the people he's making work for him. Today he's using a new technique of violence in the name of Islam. That you are courageous and good Muslim. And what is the line of pray bravery? This is the most, uh, the cowardly line. What was the, the, the sign of bravery in our salaf? That even the worst of the enemies would come in front of our pious predecessors. They would never hit or kill an enemy. They would present the kalima, the shahada, that you are human beings just like us. Oh human being, that we are all the sons of Adam. These were our brave, pious predecessors who taught us what was bravery. If for example, I go to hospital, then my kidney can be transplanted to you and your kidney could be transplanted to me. My eyes could be given to you and your eyes to me. You won't be asked in the hospital, that is he a mushrik or a disbeliever. There are thousands of people whose kidneys are functioning and transplants take a place between people. It doesn't matter if they're believers or disbelievers. So why are you killing the people? Why nowadays do people use violence? Don't kill and give harm and violence to people. Use peace and love. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught us the best way to kill off shaitan, which is muhabbah but then love, understanding between people, husni akhlaq, the highest form of conduct. Yeah, that look at the enemies that came in front of the Prophet ﷺ, they would melt suddenly because Rasulullah ﷺ would present himself with love. Many people would come with methods and techniques and plans to fight the Prophet ﷺ. When they saw his akhlaq, ﷺ, they said, please teach us the kalima. We want to recite the shahada. We made a big mistake. We came to fight you, but we shouldn't. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولُ اللَّهِ أَسْوَةٌ حُسَنَةٌ That until the day of judgment, Allah Ta'ala says that the Holy Prophet his method will prevail until the day of judgment. And has this tariqah come into our Islam today? In the society of Muslims today? It's apparent, obvious other people will catch this. <coughs> and they understand, they know that true Islam is not violence and harm and fighting and killing. They're intellectual, they know this. But today we've given them an excuse to, you can say, intellectually speak against Islam. Ah, very easy for us today to combat Islam because these Muslims themselves are spoiling the deen. Dua, do dua that Allah Ta'ala saves us from this with them because this is all happening in the world today, isn't it? And we are on the wrong track and I'm discussing this for this reason that today we live in this society. 
And we have to teach our children ourselves and we have to save ourselves from these fitan, from these tribulations and trials and wrong actions. We need to understand shaitan, how he's trying to spoil Islam today. If we want to leave this world successful, wallahi billah, shaitan, he has taught us today a very big deception that don't worry about me, carry on, um, and carry on practicing and worshipping, but what do you know that I am in your veins, in your blood, and I am in your prostration and making you do shirk and you don't even realize. And this is reality. This is reality that we cannot trust anything, any third party, unless we totally bring ourselves onto the right path that Allah Ta'ala has taught us. And we need to save ourselves from shaitan and his attacks. Tell me, who has protection today against shaitan? And how many people think today, that, oh, I'm protected from shaitan. Shaitan can't attack me. I'm fine. He can't do anything to me. And have I got that tariqah? Look at me, my house, my mother, father, relatives, etc., etc. Do we know how to ward off the attacks of shaitan? We don't even think for a second that there's an enemy from morning till evening who is not trying to spoil our dunya but he wants to insert himself into our deen so much that second by second he's controlling our deen our life what is the protection there's only one protection against shaitan what is that quran quran i told you this isn't it only quran and today alhamdulillah if we sit down and open the quran and present our situation then such solutions emanate from the pages of the quran i will say do this this is your solution this is how to take away shaitan from your life and to not become a coward but we need to be strong and firm and not come like empty hollow boxes what do we need we need the strength and the capacity do we know how to speak with the quran do we know how to communicate with the quran so if you don't know then just lower your neck because mashallah silence is the language here and there are many people with different languages and they don't know what language I'm speaking. That I'm speaking with this pure language of Delhi in front of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you don't understand or if you want to know the solution, lower your heads with humbleness. So we need to be capable of taking the message from the Quran. I was a little bit lost there what I was about to say. Uh, see how shaitan, he comes and he whispers in the end, makes us forget, makes me forget. It was a great point that was coming to my mind so we can understand. So let me just rewind a little bit. So brothers, anyway, the reason, the objective here is that shaitan, the cursed devil, his objective is to attack us in all manners to di- direct us away from the deen. Ah, I remember the point now, very important point. That what capacity do we need? Isn't it? We need some capacity, we need capability, we need the strength in order to speak to the Quran and discuss with the Quran and speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a great point I'm giving to you now. Listen carefully what I'm saying. What strength and capacity do we need? Capability do we need that the Quran uh, communicates with us? Do we need Darul Ulum to teach us? Do we need to learn Tajweed so the Quran teaches us the deen? Do we need to learn Arabic to the highest level? Look, where Arabic is spoken today, the worst are those people today. The worst, if you look at them, the foot, the people, they're on foot, naked, barefoot. Then if we need Arabic, you're saying, to understand the Qur'an, then today, unfortunately, the Arabic, the people from the Arabic nations, they are the people who don't understand the Qur'an today. They, they, are, the, they are the back of the queue in terms of the... You can give fatwa, you can give the fatwas, but this is the situation, I speak clearly. That today, the people without the understanding, without the knowledge, without the practice, are those from the Arabic nations. So we realize we don't need Arabic knowledge, the juid or ilm. We need the capability to discuss with the Qur'an and understand the Qur'an and take the learnings from the Qur'an. Shall I tell you what we need? What capability we need? If I tell you, if we do that, if we implement that, then we will have that capability. What is that? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We need to have love with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to understand the Qur'an to the depth that is required today. As soon as a person grabs hold of the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he will start to discuss and take the guidance and the light from the Qur'an. What a beautiful point Allah Ta'ala gave to me. Until today we understood, why don't I understand the Qur'an? Why don't I understand the Qur'an? Why don't I practice the Qur'an? And there are people, great reciters, Mulan, Azrat scholars are sitting here. People, the ilm and reciters, but a jahil. Jahil, we call a person a jahil who hasn't gone to Darul Ulum, hadn't studied Dazz and Azami, become an alim, and got a certificate. And in our society, we call him, oh, he's not a scholar, he's not a Mulan, he doesn't understand the Quran. But the ma'rifa, the light of the Quran that is understood by a person who is immersed in the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a person who loves the Sunnah to the nth degree, and who practices the Sunnah, he has the greatest understanding of the message of the Quran. And if we don't have these two wheels, then our cycle cannot travel along the road. The Quran explains explains everything verse by verse and what do we need to understand to the Quran the verses of the Quran we need the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi to understand the Quran not this that when everyone says oh I'm an ashik I'm a lover I love Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi we have thousands of claims to be lovers of Rasulullah but there's only one way the way of the sahaba ikram noble companions who love the prophet sallallahu alaihi that whatever he said they did 
Whatever he demonstrated, they did. Whatever he physically showed, they said that is ours. Eating, drinking, standing, sitting, walking, talking, traveling, everything. Totally we will realize that this person is an ashik, a mashuk, a lover, and he will not wilt. He will not shudder. He will not crack. Ma'ashira, society, worship, interaction with people, meeting people, eating, drinking, all these subjects and sectors of life. Every sector of our life, we have one form of guidance. What is that? Then what did Rasulullah s.a.w. say here? What did the Prophet of Allah s.a.w. do here? And shaitan, he will melt at that stage. He will run away. So the first attack that shaitan did on the society of Muslims, on the nation of Muslims, is that he took away our capability to practice Quran and understand Quran. He said, open the madrasas, open the darul ulums, open your institutions. But despite having all of this ilm, he has taken away the color and the life of the Prophet Muhammad s.a.w. from our lives. So we don't understand the Quran. And so we become his friends. And I will explain this. That we have changed our direction. Ah, he said, if the sunnah comes into the lives of the Muslims, then I will be destroyed. So he made us go on marches to Two miles, three miles, marches, shouting, complaining, etc. But he doesn't allow the ummah of the Muslims to do one action, which is to practice the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the fakir, the walis of Allah. Where do they start their deen? The people on the haq, the path of the truth. Where does their ilm start? Where does their knowledge start? And where does the understanding of the Qur'an start? Where does their alif ba'ta start from? Not the nurani qaida, but from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The first sabak, the first and the last lesson is what? That become the ashik, the lover of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Have we ever sat down like this? Have you ever sat down with somebody like this? That his initiation starts from this? Aha, and it starts from the ishq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Do you understand the words, what I'm saying, or you don't understand what I'm saying? Totally? Is it easy? Is it easy to understand? So who made us go away from the sunnah? Let's not blame other countries and people. Rather, who is doing this? The person who has given us total permission to leave the Quran and the sunnah. Who is this? Oh, look, those people, they influence us. No, 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 nobody's influencing us. Nobody telling us to go after. Everyone's busy in their world. They're making machines, manufacture, export, import, buying, selling. Why do they need to run after Adin? The person who's running after us and spoiling Adin, let's work and, 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 and ward off his attack. Yes, that we start to swear to the people, this person, this country, they're saying this to us, they're spoiling us, they've attacked us, he's playing games with us, tricks us. And even shaitan has played this game, that he's made us today blame others, that we don't even understand that he, shaitan, is the one who is our enemy. And he's made us silent and humbled us, and he has taken us off track. Why? Because he has made us munafiks with the sunnah of Rasulullah s.a.w. He has played one game, and he has made everyone play this game, because he knows everything. He's the arif. He knows everything, that there's no success for the Muslim Muslims not in this world in the hereafter, hereafter unless they follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because shaitan knows, shaitan knows, he's arif, he's knowledgeable that there's no success for the believers not in this world nor in the hereafter unless we practice the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not salah, no fasting, no hajj, no zakah, no umrah. None of the deeds will be accepted if there's no, if they're not done in the way of the sunnah. We say, oh no, this is everything. Worship, we don't need to do it in the way of the sunnah. What's the importance of this? What's the need for this? And the shaitan says, look, you do ibad all night long, no problem. Um, somebody's got this along, somebody's got this along. Everyone's following his own pattern. Everyone's got their own color. The Sahaba Ikram, 124,000 Sahaba. Alhamdulillah. Take every companion. They had the same color, the same method. And none of them opposed the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were on one platform. What was that platform? The following and the imitation of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 124,000 companions. One color. One form, one method, one approach. And today we have millions and millions and millions of Muslims. And let's take in this country, one million in this country, of this way, this method, this person has this practice, that practice, different practice, different interpretation. So when we have all different forms and colors, then shaitan will make his attack. But we are gathered here, my friends. Don't worry, we are few in number. And we, if we understand the points, I'm not giving a speech, nor... Am I a person who's uh, free from a darul ulum with a certificate? I'm not giving a speech or lecture. I'm just speaking generally, general discussion. Allah Taala sat us down here upon His name, and He's given us such a message that we, if we promise and get up today, that today what we have learned from the Quran, and if we will stick to this firmly, inshallah, we will be steadfastness. Is this a true promise? Say it loudly, inshallah. Yes. So listen clearly now. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has mentioned in the Quran that what will Shaitan do? That what will he do? He will make us cowards. 
It will make our lives cowardly. And the Muslim mu'min cannot be a coward. There are examples for the how can we attain strength and power? Through iman. Proper iman. What iman? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. How much strength is there in the kalima? The, the whole universe and the world and whatever it contains, put it on one scale and put this piece of paper with the kalima on it on the other scale and it will be heavy. And that is in our hearts, the kalima. Imagine how great a power is a mu'min. How great and strong is a mu'min, a believer, and he has made a shaitan what? Like mice, like mouse, like rats. We think we're brave, we're big. Oh, look at me physically, look at my biceps and my body, look at my chest and the V shape I've got on my body from the shoulders to the waist. Is this strength? Is this bravery? Yes, this is your beauty, alhamdulillah. Allah has given you meat and flesh and body, you look nice. And oh, look how beautiful this person is, he's handsome, he's walking down. But where's bravery, courage? Hina, here. In the heart, that's where bravery. I've seen people big, tall, strong, practically in the life. Friends, they've got body and weight, and they're the first to run to the back of the queue. <laughs> Subhanallah. Just some time back, remember that event that took place? Who were the people who ran away? The bodybuilders, the big men, the powerful men. And the people who stood there were miskeen, I swear by Allah, the miskeen, those simple people, humble. I said, Where have they gone, those powerful, strong people? Where have they gone? I said, Huh? Where have those brave people gone? They said, Sub, they've uh, flown away like parrots. Here they stood, here the brave people, because their hearts are strong, alhamdulillah. Their hearts are strong. So the fakir, they have the experience in their life. It's not just through empty words. So we are cowards. We're cowards. And shaitan's attack has come. His attack has come. And he's successful, shaitan. How? Why? Because what does he do to make us coward? What is a cowardly person? Who is a coward? What's the definition when a person has fear within him or her? This is the definition, because this is a disease, isn't it? Khawf. Oh, no, 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 what's going to happen? This disease and illness comes up, we get afraid of everything, scared of everything. Uh-huh. No, no, no. So what do we call this person? Scared, coward, afraid. In Gujarati, what do we say? Tell me loudly, what's the word in Gujarati? You won't tell me, eh? So I don't learn Gujarati, eh? Is this the reason? Subhanallah. So brothers, so cowardly, the person who's got the cowardly sort of traits and effects, shaitan makes a person... He instills the person with fear. He injects the person with khawf and fear. He's afraid, very afraid. Oh, and then shaitan succeeds in his game. So that's the khawf dunya, fear of the world. Now, what do we do? Oh, oh, how will my business run? Oh, if I don't do this action, then what will happen to me? If I follow this direction, then what will happen? Do you understand what I'm saying now? It's khawf in our hearts. Oh, how can this be? How can I practice this? Oh, I'll be destroyed. Oh, I'll go downhill. I'll lose out. Brother, don't matter. It's okay, you can do this. It's permissible. Today, how many percentage of the Ummah is doing this? Everyone sat in the masjid and we all do this. We all do this. Yes, so that no one, oh, don't let him find out. Don't let him find out. But if I don't do this, what's going to happen? We won't succeed. We won't, we won't promote ourselves in society, etc. Where has shaitan done? Shaitan's taken us to the khawf of dunya and taken us towards haram. And he's pushed the biggest and the strongest of the moments. He makes us so much full of khawf and fear. We think that if uh, those things that Allah Ta'ala has called haram, if I don't make them halal, then I cannot succeed in life in the world. Allahu Akbar. Totally, openly in the Islamic countries, it, riba, interest is consumed, not just consumed, is drank. And the stamp, the seal of approval is given on interest transactions that we cannot live without interest and riba. Today every Muslim when he does interest, when he, when he goes towards business, then the first thing we do is go towards interest and taking money on loans with interest or giving interest. We say our businesses cannot succeed without interest. Why? Because shaitan has made us afraid. Such a big fear he has instilled in our hearts. He's increased, 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 and increases so much it takes a person so far away he becomes a mushrik. A mushrik who leaves Allah's orders and ascribes partners to Allah because he says, oh no, I'll follow this sin because this is better than Allah. So shaitan is instilled fear into our hearts. We are so afraid today that if we don't sin or do haram, we cannot succeed. And shaitan is said, it's so hard, so hard. And today, the words that are used by the whole ummah of the Muslimin, which is an announcement of shirk. What, is the, what are those words that we, that we utter? That when a person is about to leave Allah's ahkam, or when someone's about to practice or wants to practice the deen of Allah, then shaitan, the people say, oh, what will the world say? That's it. These two words, 
few words. The sunnah goes, the Quran has gone, the salah has gone. No, 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 no. What will the world say? What will people say if I practice this? Isn't this the most common statement today? And it is the biggest shirk. Why? Because how we have replaced Allah Ta'ala's deen and ahkams with the dunya, with the world. Allah, you behind, you go back to the, to the back of the queue. We have to put dunya in front. We're not scared of you, Allah. We're not afraid of you. What are you going to do, Allah? No, no, no. What will people say if I don't do this? Or if I follow the deen, what will people say? And this statement today is ingrained in the whole ummah of the Muslimin due to what? The khawf of the dunya. We can't live, we can't give, our children can't study, they can't get educated, nor can they live in the world, they can't succeed, they can't run a business, they won't be able to interact, they won't attain any recognition. The whole story of our life, A to Z, is hinged on this statement, khawf, fear. What will the people say? If I do this, then people won't recognize me, I'll be degraded, I'll be disrespected, I won't be honored in society. If today my daughter, if I say this to her, then what will people say? What will people say? We are all mushrik. Allah openly announces, I'm telling you clearly, this is all shirk. This is shirk. Go and ask a mufti, a friend of Allah, that to replace Allah's orders with this statement, oh, what will people say? Allah, I'm scared of the world, I'm not scared of your statements. Then is there a bigger shirk than this? Is there a bigger idol than this? After today, promise that these words will not come out of our mouths. Total promise? Real promise? Yes. That wherever Allah Ta'ala's hukum comes, Allah's orders come. Remember this, the world may be drowning. These are the tests of life. What will we say? That Allah, we are afraid of you. We are scared of you. And when the person changes and his face and his mouth and his words and his actions reflect this, my brothers, the test will come. The trials will come. The challenges will come in life. And these words will be in front of us. Then what will people say? What should we say instead? What should we say? No, 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 no. I'm not going to do this bad action because I'm scared of Allah. Subhanallah. Then consider your Islam and your Iman has opened and unraveled and is successful. There's a hadith Remember now, subhanallah. As a Qab bin Habab, radiyallahu that he was, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was shown palaces and mansions that we cannot imagine in paradise. Such palaces and homes and mansions. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah, whose palaces are these? Are these? Do these belong to the prophets or very pious people? And Allah said, oh my beloved, such a time will come. Such a time will come in the world that these palaces will belong to those good people. Such a generation will come that people will come and live in these palaces. And thereafter, Allah is praising those people in the world who will come and live in those palaces in paradise. Allah says that that person will enter into this palace, that when in life in the world on planet earth, when haram was presented, and lawful actions were presented to him or her, and he said with passion, no, I'm afraid of Allah, I have no need for this. I have no need for this. I'm afraid of Allah. I cannot do this action. Allah Ta'ala says that when a person says this, for this person the palace has been prepared. The palace has been prepared. So you understand now, brothers, what are the rewards awaiting those people who follow Allah's direction? Do we understand what is Qur'an? And Salah, what is Umrah and Hajj? Do we understand? Here, just over little things, little tests. You want a job, and the challenge there, and you've got a form to fill an application form. You pray Salah, Dhikr, and you have to sign here, that do you do this? And you, for example, if I lie, I won't get the job, or I won't be successful, I won't get the certificate or the approval. If I speak the truth, then I won't get the job. If I lie, then he lies. No, 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 no I'm not this, I don't practice this, I'm not this, etc. We compromise. People with big Iman, there are examples. And this ilm, this is the test for the moment, for the believer. Everyone won't be Hazrat Hussein, Hazrat Imam Hussein. Allah is not asking us to demonstrate to be like Hazrat Imam Hussein, that they will be like battles or fights. Allah says, this is not the test. Allah Ta'ala says, the test is that you believe me as the God or do you believe someone else as the God is the Lord? Do you follow my orders or do you follow somebody else's orders? This is the biggest test for us today. The Allah Ta'ala says, that look at reality of the message of the Quran today. What is it teaching us? Alif la mim dhalika al-kitab la rayba fi. The Allah Ta'ala says that this is the biggest doubt. The Allah, you are weak. Your orders are not important. Dunya today is more important. This will give me my food, my chapati, my bread. Allah, you can't give to me. I have to follow the wrong way to get it. This is the biggest challenge against Allah. Do we want to come out of this, this vicious cycle, this predicament? Do you understand what I'm saying totally? You understand? So from today, what will come out of our mouths? What will come out? Let's not be as scared. If we are scared, afraid, we are afraid of Allah. We are aware of Allah. If I do this, oh, I'll get lost. No, 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 I'm afraid of Allah. Let's give me direction. I cannot do this action. Aha, that person will have Iman. So this is the test of Iman. Not that test. The oh, Yazid's coming and Hazrat Hussein or there. You know the stories, we have the speeches and the bayans and Mulanas, they give the speeches for people to cry. But we have other solutions. 
other cures to make people understand and aware the fakir speaks straightforward openly and honestly we won't be we don't we're not living in that generation that we have to do what Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu did no Allah says your test is very specific from beginning of time till now we have one enemy which is not Yazid who is the enemy shaitan the devil and they are tests that come in different generations the time Hazrat Imam Hussein radiallahu had a unique test other people had unique tests and today nowadays in this day and age what is our test oh no oh I can't follow the Quran now I've got to do something else otherwise I'm not going to succeed or I'm not going to touch this because from here comes bad and this is how the woman should speak not like a weak person when a person does dhikr and he leaves the masjid in the night he has the beard the imam libas the white libas piety totally isn't it so cool I'm telling you the truth and it's the middle of the night wife is sleeping and he opens up his device the laptop and he goes from screen to screen from side to side oh I'm just going to listen to the news and then where does it end up astaghfirullah immodest actions in modest action, all of his ibadah and piety down the drain. A person scared of the dunya, the fear of Allah has come out of the heart. And we have the love for the dunya, doesn't matter how much ibadah I do. Even if I bring my beard down to my ankles, doesn't matter. If my imama is so big and tall up to the heavens and skies, doesn't matter. But my heart has to be clean and pure and straight. What do we need? We need fear of Allah. We need, forever, we need to extract and eliminate the fear of the dunya from hearts. Allah says in the Quran, Aha, shall I tell you the verse? Wattaqullah, Allah says. Wattaqullah, ha Look at the Quran. Do you understand this verse? Wattaqullah, Allah says. And how many times have we read this? Wattaqullah, Allah says. That don't be afraid of the world, Allah says. Don't be afraid of dunya. Be afraid of me, Allah Ta'ala says. So what is this point that Allah Ta'ala is making? That the whole of the deen is, you can say, sealed in this statement. Wattaqullah, fear Allah. Why do you fear the dunya? Allah says, Allah is explaining to us. That what will the dunya give to you, a foolish person? That this dunya being scared of this dunya, the devil is your enemy. What the Allah says, fear me, don't fear shaitan, don't fear the dunya. Allah says, you don't know who I am, my Jalal, my Kamal, as Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, he was the friend of Allah. And he had fear of Allah in his heart. And when he, when he used to speak and give, uh, propagate the deen with the fear of Allah, when he would speak, he would speak with such fear like his heart and his chest was about to explode. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to the earth and said, the go Jibreel and go to my Khalil, Ibrahim alayhi salam. The why is he feeling emotional and so afraid that, and tell him that does the friend ever get scared of the friend? Say subhanallah. So Jibreel alayhi salam came to give encouragement to Ibrahim alayhi salam. He descended from the heavens. He was Khalil alayhi salam. He went to Ibrahim alayhi salam and said, Salam. Allah said, Salam to you. And Allah said this, that Allah Ta'ala sent a message to you, oh Ibrahim. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Jibreel, what is the message Allah sent? Allah Ta'ala said that, does the friend ever get scared of the friend? Why are you so afraid and scared of Allah? And as Ibrahim alayhi salam replied, that, oh Jibreel, the point is this. That he is Rabb, he is my Lord, he is the Master, he is the Khalik, the Creator. And when his fear overwhelms me, then I forget his friendship because I'm so afraid of him. Allahu Akbar, this is how fear of Allah. And he said that I forget who I am at that time and my friendship with him, that when Allah's khawf and jalal overwhelms me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created this world, and this world was manufactured and made at that time. Below the arsh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created angels. Below his throne, Allah ta'ala created the group of angels. Allah ordered those angels that worship me. Worship me. And worship me in this way that you are just going to prostrate to me and prostrate to me and prostrate me. And you should be afraid of me. You should be afraid of me. Allah, that in the day of Hashar, on the day of resurrection, those angels will raise their heads from that prostration. And on their lips, on their tongues will be subhanallah. Wa ba'idika haqqa ibadik. They will be afraid and they will say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today we have raised our heads. All praises are due to you. But we seek forgiveness from you for what? That we could not fulfill the right that was due to your worship, Allah. We could not fulfill the right. So the mu'min is greater than the angel. The mu'min, the believer, will be higher and greater and higher and more elevated than the angels. Allah made us prostrate. Why? Because in the heart of the mu'min, Allah ta'ala has, for example, La ilaha illallah is such a great, brilliant statement, kalama, that no one else has this. No one else has this. That the power, but the shaitan, our enemy, he has made us go weak. Five pence, for five pence he buys our iman. For one uh, dotted line we sign, that maybe I'll get the job due to lying here, and then we don't even get the job. We misrepresent ourselves, astaghfar, astaghfar. We lie, we deceive, Allah says, wattaqullah, at least listen to me what I'm saying. Allah, how do I listen to you? How do I obey you? Allah, if I obey you, then my, my, my world is gone, my food and my clothes and the checks that are coming every two weeks, my children will run away, my wife will run away, how will I fulfill the expenses? How can I do it? How can I fulfill the, the needs? Today, if I start getting afraid of you, Allah, how will I be afraid? Allah says, Allah, wattaqullah, let's go further. 
What a beautiful, Allah Ta'ala says, that believe in me, in the biggest translation that I like, that Allah Ta'ala explains, Hakim al-Ummata rahmatullah alayhi, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us direction. You know, we say, that Allah, we are speaking from a hal. Allah says that, well, we can't be scared of you, Allah, we can't be afraid of you. But who is saying, what is Allah saying? Allahu Akbar. Allah is the khalik and the creator, He gives the rizq, who gives health. Who has uh, created the universe and he raises everyone. He's the Rabb, the creator. Allah says, Wa'alamun. That at least have yaqeen in me, Allah says. At least have yaqeen in me. Allah Ta'ala says from the Quran, the Quran is speaking now, Wa taqullah. Insan speaks, Quran speaks, that Allah, okay, fine. From today I'll be afraid of you. But what will happen to me today? Where will I eat from? Where will my stock sell? How will I get rich? My children will they be? My wife will run away. This will happen. That way will happen. Allah and everyone presents their problems. Allah says in the Quran, "Wa'lamu, wa'lamu." Don't you believe me? What taqulla? Wa'lamu, wa'lamu. At least have conviction in me. Allah Taala says, "At least have conviction." Me. Then the man he comes down a little bit. So do we have yaqeen with Allah? Allah says, "But remain conscious of Allah." Allah Akbar. The Allah says, "An Allah ma'al muttaqin." وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says, oh foolish man, Allah is the Khalik, the Malik, who gives to everyone, at least have yaqeen in him. Allah has given us so much yaqeen. أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Be afraid of me, Allah says, and every second I will feed you, I will not leave you hungry. So remain conscious of Allah, and know that Allah is with those who are conscious of Him. Allah Hu Akbar, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Subhanallah. With every breath, your Rabb will be with you. Allahu Akbar. Wa'lamu annakum. Allah Ta'ala says, I'm with you. Wa'taqullah. Wa'lamu. So anyone else in the world give to us? I say that the king upon the king. Take all of the kingdoms. That can anyone give to anyone this much expanse? But Allah has given us so much yaqeen, the Rabb. Subhanallah. That there's nobody else who can compete. Only Allah is the provider, the supreme provider. No one can prevent or restrict Allah. But there's a test here. Allah says, don't be afraid of shaitan. Be afraid of me. And don't become the hypocrite. Oh, is there someone else? Remember that man I said to you was falling from the mountain, clinging onto the branch and Allah helped him. Or was going to help him. He said, oh, is there anyone else? No, Allah says, I need you to believe in me. Trust in me. Whatever Allah, Allah says, I remember an event. I'll explain to you about trust. Mulana Sahib was giving a speech. And he was in a village area. Allah Akbar. And there was a river there that flowed through the village and Mulana Sahib was giving the speech and they said, that, oh, this is a great verse. He read the verse. That this is such a great verse, the Quran, the Quran. That anyone who has the conviction and goes to the river, that he doesn't need a boat, he can walk across the surface of the river without the assistance of the boat. The person trusts Allah. So there was a villager, they stood there. And he said, Mulana Sahib, mashallah, you've said such a great thing. And I said, I don't need a boat. For hours we wait for the boat, for the ship to come. And we didn't know that Allah Ta'ala will allow us to go. So he went to the river and he took his goods. He used to sell milk, etc. And he read this verse. And he started to walk and he walked across the surface of the river. Mashallah, he had yaqeen. Subhanallah. Then there was a test. Mulana Sahib, he stood there. He said, what are you doing, Mulana Sahib? He said, I'm waiting for the boat. He said, you're waiting for the boat? He said, the other day I heard you, I've left the boat and you told me. He said, what? Oh, he said, oh, you told me, I can trust in Allah. Walk. That look, he said, first take a rope and uh, tie it to my feet in case I drown. In case I drown. Another way, may, inshallah, we'll get across, we'll get across. But uh, then now this is the doubt and he's afraid. What taqullah? You see that? So if I drown or if I fall, then drag, pull on me. So when Malana Sahib stepped onto the water, then nobody realized the rope went and he fell through the water. Drowned. So this is the yaqeen. This is not yaqeen, is it? So first Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ Have yaqeen in Allah. And then comes the reward. Allah says, then I will give the reward. Allah, but if you don't have yaqeen in me, Allah says, now let me show you. Allah says, I'll show you. Take the finger and take Allah Ta'ala's hand. Allah says, let me take you back in the history now. That those people are yaqeen in me. وَعْلَمُوا Allah says, Allah, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ The first, let's meet Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam. Allah's Nabi. Where was he thrown? Where did he fall into? Into the stomach of the fish, the whale. Ah, oh, it was a big ocean. He fell into the ocean and there was the depth of the ocean. Total darkness upon darkness, layers of darkness. Then there was a whale, a fish. And then there was the stomach of the whale. And what was that? There was total darkness in there. And who took Allah, as a Yunus alayhi salam out of there? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min adhalami. How did he come out? Totally, peacefully, nicely. He gave tabliq. He was my Nabi, Allah Ta'ala said. He was my Nabi, my Prophet. Allah, why did you make him do this? For this reason, wa 
Why? So you can see this example. So you also start to fear Allah that you look at this condition of my Nabi and you say, yeah, Allah is with his servant. He called out to Allah in the depths of the layers of the stomach of the animal within the depths of the layers of the ocean. Allah says, now why are you afraid of mu'min today? Will Allah Ta'ala not deliver you and give you give you what you need? Now let's look in the, our imams. Are we cowards or are we brave? Are we empty boxes or do we have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah with us? My brothers, to our lives we need to understand the purpose, objective of life. Every second, every test, every trial, every problem, can we can persevere through those hard moments. But what taqullah, whose fear should we have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq that this is a lengthy discussion that could continue and is very, very enjoyable. And verses of the Quran and examples I can give to you. But I will summarize it and inshallah we will start the dhikr of Allah. But before that, please brothers, listen, there are two points, two things that we need, two conditions. Khawf, fear of Allah. This is what Allah Ta'ala is saying, isn't it? And alongside khawf, we need, do we understand what I'm saying? What do we need? Yaqeen, conviction, assurance. Now let's look in the marketplace. Can we buy these two things? Khawf and yaqeen. Allah Ta'ala says, you need the Mulana Sab in Makkah, Tul Mukarma, or Madina, Tul Naro, somebody will be selling this. Hey, here's khawf, buy this and yaqeen. Hey, take yaqeen. Hey, take khawf and, khawf and you can go back to your homes. Yes, you can get it from the court and the company of the Wali of Allah. I swear by Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that if you want to instill fear of Allah and the yaqeen in your hearts, then get it from the company of the wali of Allah. And Allah has made this so easy, so easy. The whole of iman, why is it so easy to us, for us to attain this? So easily and simply we can attain this. And it's not difficult for us. But there's one thing that we need. And that is intention and niyyah. That from today I want to do this. Like today we made niyyah. That Allah, I need your hope, your fear. And I need yaqeen, certainty, strength of iman. Allah says, no problem. We're going to go to this place. Place, my darvish, my wali is sitting there and become his friend and take his company. You will get qawfir of Allah and you will get yaqeen. And you will feel, you will feel that Allah Ta'ala is with you. You will feel this. So here the point is finished that we've heard this verse, but rather we have to step forward. And where do we get khawf from? Where do we get yaqeen from? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So with this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the cure for the disease of the heart. Because this is a disease of the heart, isn't it? A coward. A coward. Is this a disease of the eye? Will we go to the optician? Will we go to the ENT doctor or stomach doctor? Who will we go to? We'll go to the wali of Allah because this is a spiritual disease of the heart. So being a coward and not having courage, what is this? The all of the diseases of the heart, they are all diseases that lead to hellfire. Every sickness, spiritual sickness will take us to where? To hellfire. And if we don't remove that illness, we cannot go to paradise. We are customers of hellfire. I tell you this openly, clearly, 100%. If that disease does not come of the heart, we are customers of hellfire. Doesn't matter, shaitan can deceive us, lead us down the garden path, the green path. He will never make us feel good, but we will be stood in front of the Quran and will realize that we are wrong. That is when the veils are removed. Today, have the veils not removed? So many. So then, what's the situation? That the disease of the heart, there's only one cure, the dhikr of Allah. Dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah. That's it. Totally, 100%. Easy, pure solution. Allah Ta'ala said, take all of my dhikr with the niyyah. With the, with the intention, leave haram, leave unlawful actions, and persevere through the hardships. Not that's what we're eating haram, we're going checking our balances, and we're doing uh, wrong things, there's money and money and money, and we're rotating our minds. For 70 years you can do things like this, but you'll stay like the apes and the monkeys and the animals, and you'll not become pious and good. The person is changed whose niyyah is correct and pure. That's the person who changes. And how does he get changed? That you need to test yourself. Those people whose niyyah is correct, alhamdulillah, it doesn't take them long. Their direction changes, their heart changes, their life changes. Their, their hearts and their condition and emotion change. And those who don't change, they're just the same. Money, money, money. Sheikh, they, they look at the Sheikh and in the face of the Sheikh, they see money and they feel like talking about money. And in the gathering of the Sheikh, they talk about money, think about business with others. And the brothers, we have to reach to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The court of Allah will give us success. But we have to have 100% near intention that from today, I'm not going to carry out any wrong actions. And who will I take power from? From the dhikr of Allah. From the dhikr of Allah. When my Sheikh says, that do this many thousand dhikr, do this much this be, that I need to go towards that dhikr. There is no excuse that person, that not one footstep should go towards our noble actions, nor should we shake or Allah says in the dunya I promise for you goodness and in the hereafter there's a promise that such big maqam and status and reward everything will come due to having khawf of Allah in the heart 
Yes, so my salah will be good if I've got fear of Allah in the heart. My prostration will be good if I've got fear of Allah in the heart. If I have hope for fear of Allah in the heart, I go on Umrah, then see the result. I swear by Allah, in every tawaf circuit, you will get in one tawaf, in one rotation of the Kaaba. That's it so much. Let's go, we've gone for that just by looking at the Kaaba, you will be so overwhelmed with enjoyment and muhabbat and love. As soon as they went and saw the Kaaba, they would tremble and shake like the fish. And the fish, there people are drinking, zam zam standing, doing ibadah. Go quickly, quickly, this two tawaf, go and do umrah, it's hot, oh, let's be free, let's get out of here quickly, quickly. And this is what we say. Oh, quickly, quickly, let's leave the mataf, it's too hot, too many people here, they're going around the cupboard, quickly, let's finish the tawaf. So we can go and sleep in the hotel or food time, I need to at least this food time. Quickly, quickly, do tawaf, quickly, let's get free now, let's get free now. This is what happens, isn't it? And subhanAllah, the person who goes, the true muttaqi, he's just stood in front of the cup, he just sees it and he falls unconscious. This is how they shake those insan. Human beings, I was amazed myself that this is the love the person has, the ishq. What is he saying? We haven't even, he hasn't gone into the mataf yet to do tawaf. Who are those people? What taqullah? Those people who in their hearts, the khawf of Allah, the fear of Allah has come. And it's not hard. Today, if you have the niyyah, inshallah, Allah will make us succeed today. Today, Allah will give the success. If a person wants to be afraid, Allah will make the example today. That every test, Allah will make us surpass and easy for us. But we, we don't feel this, that we are going to make life easy for us. Doesn't matter what happens, Allah says, shaitan will attack. And shaitan will try to hold you. But no, Allah will take your assistance. I won't do fraud or cheat. I won't be afraid. I won't have any problems whatsoever. Allah will follow your direction. So whose link should we have with who? With Allah. My husband used to say, subhanAllah. Have the link with the Rabb. Have love with the Rabb Allah. Have ma'rifah with Allah. And if you have to take, take from Allah. Nobody else. This my Hazrat Rahmatullah used to state, why do you look left and right and ask for help from other people? Whatever condition Allah Ta'ala has put you in, no problem. If you don't get food for a week, that's fine Allah, you're the one who will give. If you don't want to give, don't give. But I will not do that action Allah, through which I will attain the loss. Even if I'm afraid of the dunya, etc. I'm afraid of the stomach. Okay, maybe I'll die hungry. But Allah, I know you will give me food and bread. You will give me chickens and meat to eat. I have yaqeen because I have assigned myself to you Allah. And you promised to me, Allah, wa'lamu, do yaqeen, inna allaha ma'al mutaqeen. Allah Ta'ala says, that believe in me, Allah Ta'ala says, Allah, what taqullah wa'lamu anna allaha ma'al mutaqeen. Allah, you promise you will give to me. So when will you give? I'll give you my example. Where well, I'm not a good example. I am not a, a sincere or good people. What status do I have that I can give you my example? But today, once I even uh, went through such an experience, I spoke to Allah. Allah ta- I said, Allah, you gave a promise. What will happen now? That all the doors are closed and sealed. Wallah, I swear by Allah, half an hour did not pass and the life improved, the situation improved that's it and I just said this Allah, Allah just a little bit of a trial or test and a man gets scared afraid but we should speak directly with our Rabb with our Lord in 30 minutes had not passed 30 minutes hadn't passed and Allah Akbar in the life the, the, the ease came and the, the problems faded away and the fragrances came from paradise and end of story end of trial end of tribulation end of test Allah you said Allah I'm looking where's my Rabb the assistant for my Lord Allah says wait then here comes the help. End of story. All problems eliminated, evaporated, disappeared. And the friendships made. Just like Hazrat, Allah, tell, Allah said to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalil Allah, that does the friend get scared of the friend? No, this is love and connection. So my brothers, my brothers, this is the point that we need to follow the Quran correctly. We need to put our life onto the right path. This bayan of mine, listen two or three times. There are very good points in this. You listen repeatedly? Yes, do that. Because you'll get good points and all goodness will come to this. Everything from the Quran and from the deen. So may Allah give us all the tawfiq, ameen.